PET scans are a tool often used to detect cancer, but how do they do it? Using a PET scan to detect cancer is based on a Nobel Prize winning phenomenon called the Warburg effect, after its discoverer Otto Warburg. While studying cancer cells, Warburg observed something extraordinary. Instead of getting energy through oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria, cancer cells mainly relied on glycolysis and fermentation. To understand why this is significant, let's first learn how a normal cell gets energy. Cells normally make energy through cellular respiration which starts with glycolysis breaking down glucose into ATP and NADH molecules. The ATP store energy themselves and NADH then go to the mitochondria to make more ATP through the electron transport chain where the energy from the NADH is used to pump protons across the membrane and then they're let back through through ATP synthase which uses the potential energy released to make more ATP and then more NADH comes through the Krebs cycle which breaks on other products of glycolysis. The reason this is done is that ATP is a very unstable molecule due to the three negatively charged phosphate groups right next to each other. When it's broken down, a lot of potential energy is released, which is a lot easier to do than breaking down glucose. In total, this makes 36 to 38 ATP per glucose molecule. However, this only happens when oxygen is available. When there isn't oxygen, our cells use a less efficient method called lactic acid fermentation, which only makes two ATP per glucose molecule. What Warburg observed was that even in the presence of oxygen, cancer cells are using lactic acid fermentation and consuming more glucose than normal cells, as you need more glucose to produce the same amount of energy due to lower ATP yield. As to why this actually occurs, scientists aren't fully sure. Current research suggests it is likely a result of cancer itself, that cancerous mutation in genes lead to this preference for fermentation. We also have evidence that some tumors undergo an inverse Warburg effect in which they use lactic acid to make glucose, although the intricacies of this pathway are unknown. Going back to the question at the start, how does all of this relate to PET scans? You can inject someone with radioactive glucose traceable by a PET scan and find areas where more glucose is being taken up than others, which would suggest those are cancerous tissues as they have a high glucose demand due to the Warburg effect. 